Let's uh, shift away from coronavirus for just a couple of minutes and talk roads because uh, the barrels are out, everybody. There from his office at the Road Commission for Oakland County is Craig Bryson. Hey, Craig, how you doing? Good, Dave. How are you? Good. You must be an essential worker, my friend, because I see you there at work, working hard and keeping the roads in good shape. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, let's just talk about just a couple of projects, and then I'm sure we have other things to get to. A, um, downtown Birmingham. I don't know if that's your project or not, but uh, it, it's a, it is a Birmingham project. <laughs> and right. and, and uh, Maple is closed right through downtown Birmingham. Or there, it, it, it's certainly the travel through there has been slowed. I've not driven it in the last day or two, but uh, you got Maple there. And then you've got Maple Road. Um, in the West Bloomfield area that is impacted by construction. That one I know you can talk about. Right. That's the Maple Middle Belt Roundabout. Um, as you probably know, we, we constructed most of that last year. We opened it up uh, at the end of the season last year, knowing that we had some work left to do this year, that we'd have to close it again this year. So uh, on April 27th, we did close it down again, and we're in there um, – doing the, the finishing work, which will take us probably into uh, June to finish that up. And during that time, Maple Road East and West remains closed. Middle Belt North and South remains open. Uh, but we've got some uh, curb work to do there, the concrete work in the, in the center island, uh, some behind the curb landscaping. We're putting up the uh, Hawk pedestrian crosswalk signals there. So it's a variety of work that needs to take place there that we're, we're getting done now. All right, and about uh, how long will it be until uh, until that's completed in that area? We're expecting till sometime in June, till it's till it's open, uh, weather oh, permitting. Pretty quick. It's pretty quick. Um, are you working on uh, the same quantity of projects that you normally would be working on, um, or has the coronavirus, uh, is it uh, COVID nineteen slowed you down on projects? Well, we're we're pretty much where we would normally be. Last year was uh, just a record year, so we're not doing quite as much work as we did last year, but that, that was unrelated to the coronavirus. That was more of a funding um, issue. But at the moment, um, our major construction projects are going. We have kind of hit the pause button on several upcoming projects that may or may not go this year, depending on funding. Um, right now, really, it's more the funding ramifications of the coronavirus than the um, than the virus itself. Um, as you know, uh, gas taxes are our second largest source of funding and people are driving a whole lot less right now. Um, our gas tax revenue for March was down about uh, 10%. We think that's gonna be probably double that for April and maybe even more for May. Um, so the, the full budget ramifications of all that uh, remain to be seen. Craig Bryson of the Road Commission for Oakland County. Does that impact you right away, Craig, or do you have like accrued dollars so these budget reductions would impact work down the road, or does it have immediate impact? Yeah, it's not immediate yet. It, it could be by the end of the summer, frankly, if, uh, if these projections hold. Um, we could be stopping work, reducing work, um, or worse, if, you know, depending on how bad the, the budget gets. I mean, there are projections that the traffic is at 50% of normal levels right now. If that remains for a while, and it looks like probably will at least for a couple more weeks, um, it could begin to get serious. Uh, hopefully more people begin to go back to work by the end of May and, and we'll get back to normal gas tax revenues. But but again, that remains to be seen. It, isn't it really? It's it's crazy ironic that, that you know, the biggest thing that uh, that this governor and all of us wanted to do was fix the damn roads. Right. And uh, that's Absolutely. all we've been hearing about. And now, you know, our ability to do that, we, we're really severely handcuffed on that. Oh, absolutely. You know, a little little international pandemic comes along and that uh, throws a monkey wrench in everything. So um, all that stuff that's going on in I-75 over in the Troy area, is that uh, anything that you're involved in? As well, no. That's that's MDOT's uh, project, and uh, as you know, they're they're moving ahead full speed with that. Yeah, it seems to be moving along. You know, and I was thinking it might be easier for all the the men and women who are out working on the roads with fewer of us driving around. Is it easier to get the work done? It is, and and that's certainly a benefit. Um, you know, all, all of our crews that are out patching potholes or um, doing other essential work along the roads appreciate the fact that there is a lot less traffic and. Um, you know, that's certainly a safety benefit for them. It makes it easier to do their work, you know, and 
easier to close roads or lanes when we need to, uh, but we do continue to remind people that there are still people out working on the road. You still need to be careful when there's uh, workers present. Any other, because we now have a little bit more global uh, coverage here across much of Oakland County, any other projects that uh, that are on your desk that you might or that are coming that you might want to let people know about? Well, I think most people in the in the Orion area are familiar with our Baldwin Road project. It's a $50 million reconstruction and widening project of Baldwin Road, essentially from I-75 up to Walden. And we're working on the northern uh, mile of that this year, uh, wrapping up uh, what's turned out to be um, a three-year project. Um, we've got Maybe and Walden Roads both closed at Baldwin currently to work on those intersections. Um, that's underway. We've got a number of, uh, of other big projects coming in Berkeley, for example. We're going to be resurfacing uh, 12 Mile through downtown Berkeley. Uh, we'll be doing a section of 12 Mile from Losser to Telegraph in Southfield. Um, a lot of a lot of work coming this year. You know, it's not your fault. I almost hate to bring it up because we, you know, we're friends, right? But you know, what a double whammy for the people in Berkeley. You know, they they finally get their stores back open, and then we're going to have to do the road construction. You know, it's just you can't plan these things out. It's no one's fault. It just no, it's, no, it, it's just unfortunate, not. though, isn't it? It absolutely is, and you know, in an ideal world, that would certainly be not how it happened, but. Um, but unfortunately, we need to get that job done this year because next year there's going to be other parallel projects and we can't have, you know, multiple mile roads uh, impacted at the same time if we can help it. So it is unfortunate. We, we feel for those, you know, the businesses and the residents, but, you know, the, the residents are inconvenienced. The businesses, of course, it's it's um, a real economic challenge. And we really do feel for all of those people that are that are suffering through this. Craig Bryson, uh, Oakland County Road Commission for Oakland County. Let me get that right. Uh, we've talked about it before, but uh, for folks that might be tuning in today that have not heard us have a chance to have this conversation, uh, you talked just briefly before we go about the roundabouts. We see more and more roundabouts. You talked about the one at Maple and, and Middlebaugh, but they're popping up in virtually every community. Uh, we see a ton of them in Oakland County. Uh, can you talk a little bit about why those are popping up so much and, and uh, the uh, opportunities or challenges that they present? Absolutely. And that the Maple Middle Belt, by the way, is our 28th roundabout in uh, on road commission roads in Oakland County. That's the highest concentration in the state. Uh, we love them for two, two reasons. Um, number one, they move a lot more traffic than a signalized intersection will. Um, engineers estimates are anywhere from 30 to 50 percent more traffic through an intersection and often in the same footprint, so without any additional land. Uh, so they're in, in that sense, from a traffic flow and mobility point of view, they're a real great bang for the buck. Secondly, and, and probably more important really, is the safety benefit. Um, roundabouts save lives. Um, the, the data is overwhelming. The, 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 the reduction in traffic fatalities at intersections when roundabouts are put in to replace signals is, is unparalleled. Um, numerous studies at the federal uh, highway level and the, in the private sector have shown that they reduce traffic fatalities at intersections by about 90 percent. Um, and as I've said before, there really is virtually nothing else we can do that will reduce fatalities by 90 percent. Um, so it's a real it's a real win win moves more traffic more efficiently and reduces people getting killed at, at intersections in urbanized areas. And that's yeah, that's critical. Well, and I get that, and we've talked about it before, and I, the people are, are listening to you say that, and they go, are you, Craig, come on, are you kidding me? Uh, fewer accidents, these are confusing for a lot of people. And people don't like necessarily at first driving through them until they get used to them, but as you explained to me many times before, uh, when you have a conventional intersection, you get a lot more um, high-speed T-bone-type accidents, and in the accidents are very different in the roundabout, and they're, they they don't have they're they're usually not as severe. Is that correct? Absolutely. So at a signalized intersection, people die in two ways. You have either head-on collisions or broadside collisions, as you mentioned, the T-bone collisions. That's where we see the fatalities in intersections, especially in urbanized areas. Um, with a roundabout, you're almost physically eliminating the possibility of either of those kinds of, of accidents. You'd have to go over the center island to have a head-on collision. We've not seen that in Oakland County very often. Um, uh, and their broadside in, uh, collisions don't happen. What you do see is slight increase sometimes in the side swipes or slow speed rear end collisions. Um, those are almost always property damage accidents. In other words, just the car is damaged, the people are not injured. 
Uh, while we certainly don't want to see, you know, any kind of accidents, property damage or human damage, if we have to choose between the two, we'll take a, uh, a fender bender over a fatality any day of the week. All right, Craig Bryson, thank you very much for joining us. Anything else you want to add before we uh, say so long today? Uh, not other than to, to thank all our crews who are out there continuing to work, you know, practice, practicing the uh, social distancing and safety procedures, but they're out there doing uh, the usual fantastic job keeping the roads safe and open for everybody out there, and, and we appreciate that as well as, of course, all the other essential workers that are out there um, keeping us going. All right, Craig. Well, thank you for saying that, and we echo your thanks. And, uh, and listen, we know we'll probably have another conversation in a couple of months because we know we have tough budget days ahead of us. So uh, best of luck navigating those waters, and thank you for all you do. Good to talk to you today. Thank you, and thanks for all the work that you guys do. You're doing a great job of sharing information, and we, we really appreciate that. Thanks, Craig. Very kind of you. Craig Bryson, Road Commission for Oakland County.